Hey everybody, it's Jay Ball here with Blue Jays Maple Syrup, and I'm pretty excited today. Not just because I'm going to get my nephew, we're going to go fishing for the next couple days, but I am actually taking my pan, my pre-warm pan, and my float box to my brother, Madcock Wooden Forge, and I'm going to give this to him to see if he can't get the float box set up. Because like some of you probably saw in my earlier videos that I've posted, um, you know, my cousin Brian gave me a float box and unfortunately it just doesn't, it's not designed to fit my pan or my evaporator. So the hope is that my brother can somehow fab this thing up so that this will actually take my maple syrup production to the next level. So um, next time you see, you'll see this set up. Hopefully it is, uh, it's all done. So let's see what happens. So the first part of this maple syrup pan evaporator upgrade started back in July. It is now the middle of January and my brother and I are finally getting around to getting this float box put on the evaporator. You guys saw a time lapse of me and my brother trying to get everything lined up. Let me walk you through the plumbing and what I'm doing now while I'm doing this in the basement where it's not cold out like in the garage. But let me show you guys exactly what I'm trying to do and how this is going to really increase my production how it's going to make me be more consistent as a maple syrup producer. So let's check this out together. Okay, so let me just quickly give you an idea of how the maple sap flows through this system to turn it into maple syrup. So this is my pre-warm pan right here. This is my main evaporator, and then this is the float box that I'm trying to add to the evaporator. Okay, so you guys can see that. So what happens is the sap flows in through this out this port right here, goes through this channel as it boils, okay? Goes through that hole back here. There's another hole way back in the back, and then it pushes itself forward, and that's where I draw off the maple syrup. So the change in density from 2% sugar up to, you know, 59% sugar, the change in the density is what pushes the sap and the syrup through the system, okay? So what happens is when I draw the syrup off, I have to increase the flow rate in this pre-warm pan. So I have to keep adjusting this nozzle right here, which is, it's a, it's a pain. It's one more thing I gotta worry about. This float box actually has a float that once I get this plumbed up, the, the sap will come in through this float box and then feed into the pan back here so that now I don't have to adjust this level. I've got a glass coming, it's a glass float that you'll be able to see the, the level of the syrup in the pan. Huge upgrade. If I can get this thing plumbed in to work with this pan, this is gonna really increase my productivity and, and increase my consistency. So I wanna show you this float box. So this is the float, it sits inside the float box. So there's a little lever, which I'll show you in a second, that goes in here. So as the syrup or the sap in the pan reduces, this draws down, opens up a valve, and that valve lets more sap in. So here is that valve. So it's hard to see, but there's a little silicone bushing back there. That float hooks into this lever, and as the sap draws down, this opens up and puts more sap in. So once I get my level set, I will only have to worry about keeping my pre-warm pan full, which is right here. So I'll explain this and be able to show it to you better once I actually get this thing up and fired and running. But I wanted to kind of give you guys a breakdown of what I'm trying to do, why this flow box is so important right now. And what I'm trying to do is get the plumbing figured out from here to here and from down here to here. So that's why I've got all these different fittings. I'm not a plumber by any stretch of the imagination. I did get my final box of fittings. So let's open this thing up and see if we can't get this all connected together. My brother's actually in the process of making a bracket. We cut the old bracket off because this bracket is not designed for this pan. It's designed for a different one. So let's see what's in the box and let's see if we can't get this thing plumbed together. Okay, before I open up the box, I, I want to give you just a little bit closer view of what we're working at. I jacked up the evaporator on some buckets to get it off the ground because it sits on top of my arch. 
Um, so this is an inch NPT thread, and the inlet for the float box is three quarter inch NPT. So the in inlet for the pan is also three quarter is one inch NPT. So what I had to do is buy this reducer to go from an inch down to a three quarter, and then I had to buy another one here. So again, like I said, the sap's going to flow out of the, out of the pre-warm pan into the float box, and then from there, it's going to go from this port into here. So I just wanted to tell you, you know, show you guys what I'm trying to do. So I've got to go from a one inch down to three quarter, and then from three quarter back to one inch. And again, this float box is not designed for my evaporator. It's one that my cousin gave me for his evaporator, but it was a spare one that he had. So Again, we're just trying to retrofit this thing and make this as easy as possible because I do want to be able to take it off. That's another thing. I had to order some couplings so that I can take this on and off and clean it and flush it out. That's why I've got this valve here so I can shut this off so that I can drain all the liquid out of here, clean it, and not lose any of the circuits actually in the pan. So let's get to it. So what we got from McMaster Car is another one of these one inch down to three quarter reducers. So I'm going to thread this one inch reducer to the one inch inlet right here okay and then what I also got was these couplings so these are three quarter inch couplings I needed to have a way to be able to take the couplings off and take the float box off so that I can clean it so again I'm not a plumbing guy I'm a machinist by trade um, so I think these three quarter inch MPT couplings are going to help so that I can take this thing off and clean it periodically because I'm very uh, very particular about keeping everything clean so I'm gonna set the camera up and do a time-lapse you guys can take a look at me trying to see if I can't get this thing fit together This is the fun part. So you can see I've got the three quarter or the one inch down a three quarter connection here. But here's my problem is I'm too far out from the float box. I need to figure out something here because this is just stuck out too far. I don't know if I can get a shorter piece of all thread here or if I can tighten some things up, but I need to be able to shift this box back or shift that out to get that lined up so that there's a not a twist or anything because I want this block box to be flat and then also square so I might have to do some more thinking on this one okay so next day I had to take a little bit of a break and I had to clear my mind but as you can see I finally have everything connected so I have my one inch inlet from my pre-warm pan now plumb down to three quarters I've got a coupler here that I can take this coupling off here. Um, so when I have to clean the pre-warm pan and the float box, I can do that. I've got another coupler down here with this six inch piece of pipe back to this valve. So I can open and close this valve um, when I need to clean the pan because I don't want to have the main syrup come out. But it looks a little bit different than the last time you guys saw this. Um, but I, I had to do something. I was tired of ordering parts. I'm like, I gotta have enough stuff here. I know it's not level, but if my brother and I are gonna make a bracket so you can see when I pick this up, everything will actually get square. So I need to, need to do a little bit more of a modification under here, but it's good to go now. I actually have the float set up inside of here, so I wanna show this to you guys so you can get a little bit better visual. I'll try to adjust the camera. So this is the float inside of here. And as the float raises, okay, it close off that valve. You can see that little blue valve close off. As the level gets down in the pan, as it evaporates, this floats down and allows more sap to come in from the pre-warm pan. So as I'm drawing off syrup from over here, okay, it is automatically going to fill out of there. And that is a huge upgrade for me. So that has been a struggle, another one less thing I have to manage. I have a, um, a valve come in here, so you guys will be able to see the level, how much sap I have in the pan, which I'll explain that once I actually get stuff in it. So yeah, pretty happy with this whole setup. Again, this float box was not made for my evaporator, so we had to make this one work, but we finally got it. 
Well, I think this this is it for this segment of Blue Jays Outdoors working with the pan and the float box. Like I said, I need to do a few more modifications. My brother and I are going to make a bracket to go right here so it hangs on the pan. I need to go through and put uh, plumber's tape on all this stuff, get everything tightened up. i got to do a little bit more modification, but we're just going to say this is all done here. I didn't show you guys every single piece of this as far as like the hand grinding I had to do under here. That was just... I probably spent four or five hours yesterday just thinking about this. Again, I'm not a plumber. I can't see this stuff. I'm sure there's people out there like, oh, Jay, that's really simple, but I'm not a plumber. This is the first plumbing I've ever had to do. So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me through this adventure. Maybe not be the most exciting stuff, but hey, this is what you go through when you're trying to modify your evaporator with a float box that was not designed for your evaporator. But like I said, huge upgrade. This is going to be a big help this season, and I'll explain to you guys why that is once we get farther into the season. So again, my name is Jay Ball, Blue Jays Outdoors. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's blue underscore J underscore maple underscore syrup. And hang on because there's a lot more maple syrup stuff to come. And remember, the easiest way to change your attitude is by showing gratitude. Thanks. We'll see you next time.